Dr. Jennifer Luke is a Wellbeing and Employability Research Fellow within the University of Southern Queensland's Drought Resilience Adoption and Innovation Hub. With experience in both the academic and career development spaces, she focuses on providing meaningful and decent work for all ages, particularly for regional and rural communities. Jennifer discusses how communities can adapt to a changing world and the role that career development can play in adaptation. Hello everyone, yes, I'm Jennifer Luke and I'll be talking about um, sustainable cities and communities, but really looking at it through the lens of career and workforce development. So really looking at, um, already we've heard about all the things that are happening uh, that we need to be doing. And now um, what I'm gonna be doing, very much like Laura was saying before about um, that adaptation and adapting um, versus mitigation. So what do we need to be doing to encourage people to step into uh, jobs, uh, either whether they're working now or talking to people that are coming through schools about their career. So let's get going. So I'll just quickly go through here because Morris, you did such a great job of the introduction um, already, is that, uh, yes, I'm with the University of Southern Queensland with their Innovation Hub, which is funded um, through the Australian government's Future Drought Fund. So I'm particularly focusing on regional, rural and remote communities within Australia at the moment um, in that well-being and employability. And employability is your career development. And so I'm going to be looking at that, uh, but I also am a private practitioner uh, where I do consultancy work through uh, my business clear outlook. So what we're looking at here is that sustainable cities and communities and I'm really just going to go quickly through these slides because it's been spoken about already uh, this evening in the webinar but these are things straight from the UN. Uh, one of them um, is what they talk about here is that the world's population is constantly increasing. And to accommodate everyone, we need to build modern, sustainable um, cities. Now, if you look at this from a workforce perspective, so think about, okay, when you're looking at this, what are the jobs that are needed? What are the positions? So for all of us to survive and prosper, we need new, intelligent urban planning that creates safe, affordable and resilient cities with green and culturally inspiring living conditions, which really I'm just repeating what Laura was just talking about then. But think about, okay, so what are the jobs? What are the positions? Where can we be encouraging people from a career perspective? Now, the next slide, again, is a quick fact uh, coming from one of the UN's uh, publications, where back in 2008, they stated that for the first time in history, the global urban population outnumbered the rural population. And this was something uh, that Professor Trinder mentioned um, in his presentation, is that people are moving into the cities. Uh, we're squashing ourselves into smaller spaces uh, because we're moving out of a lot of the regional and rural areas. And that's something that I'm seeing very much so uh, with a lot of our regional centres in Australia. Uh, particularly during COVID and lockdowns, uh, it was interesting to see where people were moving. Some people were moving closer into the cities, while some were wanting a tree change and moving further out into the regional areas. But the, in 2008, this is where they saw, saw that that population was changing. And this milestone marked the advent of a new urban millennium. And so, again, they're saying that by 2050, it's expected that two thirds of the world pops, uh, world's population will be living in urban areas. Very quickly, another one uh, I just wanted to highlight here again from another of uh, the UN's SDG uh, research uh, documents uh, and a publication is where they were stating that the next 20 years transportation uh, would be expected to be the major driving force behind a growing world demand for energy. And sustainable transport achieves better integration of the economy while respecting the environment, and it improves social equity, health, resilience of cities, urban-rural linkage, and productivity of rural areas. Now, you can see why I've highlighted this one, particularly because of my current area that I'm focusing on in that regional and rural areas, but I am researching within well-being and employability. 
and they work together because it's all about if you're building on your career, so that employability side, is that you've got to have good well-being because you're not going to go looking for jobs when you're not feeling right. And so this is why well-being and employability work together. And when it comes to looking at uh, this particular SDG 11, it's all about, and it was mentioned uh, previously in, uh, Laura actually mentioned about well-being, and um, also Professor Trenda mentioned about well-being. And that is a big part of when you're looking at building a workforce, you've got to have those sustainable environments. And again, very quickly, before we jump in, uh, to further looking at what the jobs are that are there now and what we need to be looking at, what will be created in the future. Again, this has been taken directly uh, from the UN's SDG site, and it's looking at the statistics with a career and workforce development perspective. So again, what I'm wanting to do is have you look at that, which is really just some infographics about what we've already heard and what we know about needing to look after the environment, to look after our communities within both regional and within cities. But looking at it through a workforce perspective, where can you see focus for study? and future job opportunities, just from what's on that infographic. And so consider this with career planning. Now, I research in this area, but previously, uh, before I was working as a full-time researcher, I was a career counsellor. And that was both within universities, uh, where I was working with students, particularly research students and students that were doing post-grad work, so like doing MBAs. Uh, but also I have done a lot of career counselling uh, work with older workers, um, even people who are in retirement that are wanting to re-engage with career. And so when you're having those career um, conversations, a lot of the time it is about, well, first off, the first thing you've got to do is find out what someone wants to do, what's meaningful to them. And so when you consider this with career planning and sustainable pathways, again, all the SDGs. So uh, from a career perspective, I look at all of the SDGs. They're all important and I can fit into all of them with the work that I'm doing in that well-being and employability space. It's not just with um, decent work, uh, which is uh, SDG 8. It's with all of them. But have a look at this, and it's all about skills and knowledge being developed in one sector can be transferable to other sectors. And that's where that adaptation comes into play. So very quickly, just so I can give a bit of an overview of where I'm coming from with this career development, which is that employability side. And this is where people find meaning in their work. Now, you can see here that in career development, it's all about knowing yourself exploring options, getting focused, and taking action. Now, what I'm particularly wanting to focus on uh, with this webinar is where I said about it's all about people finding meaningfulness in where they're wanting to go career-wise and linking that into SDG 11. So to find meaning, it's about understanding who you are. And that's making sure that you can understand and identify what your values are, what your interests are, your strengths, your traits, and your ambitions. So you've got to understand that, not just for yourself, but also when you're explaining to someone else why you want to do uh, a particular career path. So if you look at it from the SDG 11, if that is an area that you're very passionate about, then you would be able to look at knowing yourself and be able to identify exactly in all of those areas uh, what it is that draws you to your passion for uh, about sustainability and about communities and cities. And the other part, so that's the meaningfulness, now looking at the opportunities now and into the future. And this is where that adaptation comes in. So very much what was mentioned previously, uh, Laura mentioned about adaptation versus mitigation. So that adaptation is about being flexible. It's about being innovative. It's about actually preparing being able to alter the pathway uh, to change. Now, that's not just with uh, 
looking at that sustainability, but also in how you go about your career. So if you're wanting to uh, either yourself or encourage someone else to consider what are the opportunities out there in that sustainability area, then this is where you look at with career development, it's looking at exploring options. And that's understanding the occupational research. So finding out what are the jobs out there? What's involved in those jobs? Do you need to be qualified? Can you connect in with someone who's in an area? Uh, it's also about understanding the industry trends. Now, definitely you can have a look at all of the UN publications and you can find there a lot of research, a lot of reporting, a lot of data, uh, which actually explains, you know, where the trends are happening. But even what's been mentioned in both of the previous presentations in this webinar, there's been a lot of different areas mentioned, uh, including like geoscience, um, satellite imagery, uh, looking at very much in that um, ecology, just looking at energy consumption, all of those areas, how many different occupations are involved just in that and how they can be transferred across different sectors. So this is what we're looking at. It's that meaningfulness and then that adaptation. So what I'm just going to do uh, next, uh, and this is really uh, the second half of this presentation, is looking at the career paths, who is needed and how. And I'm going through each of the targets for SDG 11. And really, I've just got a few dot points here, uh, more to get you thinking. And I'd love uh, to hear your thoughts uh, when we have the Q&A. But the first one here is safe and affordable housing. So for this one here, uh, what the goal, the target is within the SDG 11 is ensuring access for all to adequate, safe and affordable housing and basic services and, and, to, and upgrade slums. Now that's the target. Now for this one here, I have just put a few dot points of different jobs. Now the ones in green are the ones where I'm really wanting to highlight that yes, they are there now, but they're the ones that there's going to be a huge need for. All of them are, but these are ones particularly I just wanted to highlight. So when it comes to safe and affordable housing, you can look at property development, architectural services. So remember, think of this more as adaptation, not mitigation. How can you be innovative? If you're talking to someone who's wanting to get involved in this area, are they interested? Are their values, uh, are, you know, what they're really interested in fit into any of these particular jobs? And I've put in their policy and strategy, of course, town planning, all of the trades. Uh, here in Australia, we have got a shortage in apprenticeship, uh, apprentices taking up trades. I know that's not just a thing happening in Australia, uh, but it's definitely something that you have to think of. This is why it's so important, because you can't build without people with these skills. Uh, I've also got down their security services, but I've highlighted health and allied services, particularly aged care as an area, because we do have an aging population. And this is an area that I do focus a lot on in both my research and advocacy, uh, very much focusing on their intergenerational. But the thing is, is that we do have an aging population and to build sustainable communities, whether it's within regional areas or within the cities, Age care is a priority. And also I have down there network and technology, which I don't even need to break that down anymore. There are so many jobs that all of us would be able to think of that fit within that. Uh, but that's the safe and affordable housing. Now, just very quickly, and I won't spend as much time going through all of the dot points with the others, we've got affordable and sustainable transport systems. Now, this one very much is looking at um, both road safety, but also about, you know, that multimodal um, transport. Now for this one here, uh, just quickly uh, going through, is that you can see there you've got environmental uh, engineers, but I've also included in there augmented reality developers, which, you know, really think about the technology is that, you know, looking at how you can use VR, you can use AR to be able to test 
to look at how transport systems are going to work. So that's why I've thrown that one in there. And I've also inclu included in there social and broadcast media because how much is social media needed? Now, the next one, inclusive and sustainable urbanization. Again, I've included a few dot points here, but it's really just looking at what these tar targets state and then thinking about what are the jobs out there and where can you go to start thinking about where you can find out more about those jobs? Who do you know that might be working in some of these jobs already? Are they doing something already to do with that sustainable urbanization? The next one is protect the world's cultural and natural heritage. Now, this one, of course, is very important. And again, it's really just highlighting that this just isn't about regional areas. It's about cities. It's about making sure that you're protecting that culture and also that natural heritage. And I've included in there quite a few dot points about things to consider and where jobs are, where careers are that you can focus on. And you can see that they cover so many areas. And I've included space technology, particularly uh, as Professor Trinda was mentioning earlier uh, about that satellite, um, satellite technology, is that how could you use that if you think about it, um, when you're mapping out areas that have that world's cultural and natural heritage. Okay, the next one is uh, reducing the adverse effects of natural disasters, which was spoken about quite a bit um, previously in one of the other presentations. Again, just having a look at the types of jobs uh, to consider. And again, they're only examples more so go and have a look at who's working in these areas. And then the next one, reducing the environmental impact of cities. And with this one here, uh, I've also included in here, um, which was previously mentioned too, is that you can think about, okay, we need to cut back on pollution, uh, looking at how to be more um, eco-friendly. That also includes, you know, looking at landscapers, uh, so it's not just about, again, the mitigation, how to stop things, is that what do we need to make sure that we're doing to build that green space? Okay, provide access uh, to safe and inclusive green and public spaces. Again, you, there's a lot of the same type of job. So you can see here that when you're looking at different careers, they don't just cover one target and they don't just cover one SDG. But if you're passionate about this area, already you can see how many jobs that are out there and career paths. The next one is uh, focusing on strong national and regional development planning. So it's that economic, that social and that environmental links between urban, peri-urban and rural areas. Now, this one is an area that I look at quite a bit because you're strengthening that national and regional development planning. Again, this covers both economic, um, economics, but also social and well-being. Okay, the next one, implement policies for inclusion, resource efficiency, and disaster, uh, disaster risk um, reduction. This one was spoken about quite a bit uh, by Laura, so I won't go into it too much, but it is interesting that I've included in there global navigation satellite systems, which links in very much so uh, with the first presentation that Professor Trinda was talking about. So again, there are so many careers. Think about this either for yourself or for anyone that you're wanting to encourage to be thinking about this particular area. Okay, and to finish up, uh, the last one here is supporting the least developed countries in sustainable and resilient building. So it's bringing each other together, making sure that it this is a worldwide focus, which is what the SDGs are all about. And again, there's you can see it's the same type of jobs that are there. So really what I want to do is just to encourage everyone to be thinking again. And this is why I've brought up that final slide that I had at the start, that the world's population is constantly increasing. To accommodate everyone, we need to build modern, sustainable cities. And for all of us to survive and prosper, we need new, intelligent urban planning that creates safe, 
affordable and resilient cities with green and culturally inspiring living conditions. Now, all of that is about adapting. So remember, it is all about understanding what it is that you find meaningful. And if you are drawn very much so to this sustainable approach, um, the SDGs 11, but of course the other SDGs too, then definitely look at it from a career perspective and understand who you are, why you're wanting to do this, and then look at where you can find further information. So I think I'm right on time. Uh, so thank you everyone uh, for listening. And I would love to hear from you if you'd like to um, touch base. I am regularly um, on Twitter, which is where I use for my research, but also from an advocacy point of view. And you can find me at A Clear Outlook. Uh, so thank you very much. <laughs>